I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I know what's gonna be in your AFM exam, and that topic is hedging. It's in every ACCA AFM exam. I'm not giving any secrets away, really. It's gonna be in your exam, it's in every single one. So you need to be ready for it. And I know that students often fear hedging. It's one of those topics, I just mention the word futures or colors, and I can see the sweat forming on their heads and the panic starting to come over in their eyes. But honestly, it is fine. Hedging's great. I love hedging, and I genuinely mean that. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode today. I'm going to tell you what hedging is, and just go really back to basics. Because if you understand the core concepts and why we're doing this, suddenly hedging becomes a whole lot easier and a whole lot less scary. So what is hedging? Well, I'm going to tell you a story which will help you understand what it's all about. Now, it's my wife's birthday in about nine months time. I hope she's not listening because this is a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to buy her some gold for her birthday. So there's not until nine months time. I've got loads of time to think about it. So I want to buy her some gold. The thing is, the price of gold keeps going up. And I'm really worried in nine months time that when I come to buy it for her, it's going to be too expensive for me to be able to afford it. So what I'm thinking is I need to protect against those price rises. I'm really worried that by the time we get to a birthday, I'm going to go and buy it and they'll say, this is how much it is. I'll say, whoops, right, we might have to move on to something else. Maybe just a nice bunch of flowers instead. So what I want to do is protect against that price rising. And that's where hedging can come in. And yes, you can actually use hedging products to protect against the rise of price in gold. So what I could do is I could take out a hedge now. So nine months before I actually need this product, I could take out a hedge. And what they'll do is it will then lock me into a rate. So I know in nine months time how much I'm going to pay for the gold. And I know that I'm going to be able to afford it and I can relax over the next nine months knowing that I've got a fantastic present lined up and hopefully a very happy wife. So that's what hedging will allow us to do. It allows us to protect against those rates changing. Now, you might just say, well, why don't you just buy the gold now? And actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea, is it? Yeah, if I'm worried about the price going up, well, I could just buy it now, couldn't I? And then I will get whatever the price is today. The problem is, firstly, I don't have the cash yet because I need to save up for it. And secondly, I don't want the risk of holding on to that gold for nine months because I'll probably lose it or one of our kids will bury it in the garden or something. So I'm worried that I would end up not having the gold on her birthday. So I can't do that for various reasons. I'm not able to buy it up front. So what I want to do is just agree the price. So then in nine months time, I can then just go and get it. So that is the concept of hedging. We're protecting against a rate changing. Now, if I already own some gold, I might be worried that the rate would fall. And actually, when I come to sell it later, the rate might go down. So you can sort of see it from both points of view. But hedging can work in either direction. Now, one of the great things about hedging is that there is always going to be one side that does well and one side that does badly. So if the product itself has gone against you, so in my case, if the price of gold has gone up, then my hedge will do well and therefore the two things will offset. So if the price of gold has gone up, then whichever hedging products I've decided to use, they'll make me a gain and the two things will offset. Whereas if the price of the gold has dropped and actually it's got cheaper for me, then my hedging product is going to lose out and therefore I end up in the same position. So whatever happens, there'll always be sort of one good bit of news for me and one bad bit. If the price of gold moves against me, then my hedge will move with me and vice versa. The other way around is true as well. Now, I like to do this in my courses using sort of a smiley face and a sad face. So I'll look, whenever I'm doing a hedging question, it makes hedging a little bit lighter, a bit more fun when you see some sort of emojis on the page. And I'll show you, right, look, this transaction went really well for us. This rate moved in our favor. Therefore, the other side of it didn't do so well. And the two things will all offset. So the idea is that we end up in roughly the same position, no matter what happens, we should end up in roughly the same position in a hedge. So that's the concept and that's what hedging does. It protects us against things moving against us. Now in the real world, you can hedge gold, as I mentioned. You can hedge oil, you can hedge copper, aluminium, nickel. There's something called the London Metal Exchange, which allow you to do that. You can hedge wheat prices, barley, 
dairy products, you can protect against the price of loads of different things. So if companies are concerned about the prices of things changing, then they can protect against it. So that's the general concept of hedging. We're protecting against rates changing. In AFM, you don't have to worry about hedging gold or copper or wheat or barley. You do need to know about hedging two main products though, and they are interest rates and foreign exchange rates. So we've got two ways that this can get tested and both of those do come up in the exam. And often people say, oh, which one do you think it's gonna be? Well, they, they mix it up and actually, do you know what? I've seen them test both in one question before. Like they do do that sometimes. Bit of interest rate, bit of foreign exchange as well. So they can actually test a little bit of both. Now I'm gonna start by thinking about interest rates. So let's start and do a quick overview of interest rate hedging in AFM. So with interest rates, if I'm taking out a loan, let's say it's in nine months, let's stick with nine months. So let's say I'm taking out a loan in nine months, I need to borrow some money. I'm worried that the interest rates are gonna increase before I take out my loan, aren't I? Because then that's gonna cost me more money with my interest. So I might want to protect against that. Equally, if I had money to deposit or invest in a few months time, I'd be worried that the rates are gonna fall over the next few months. So then I would earn less interest. So in either position, I'm worried that interest rates are changing, so therefore I might want to hedge my position. Again, protect against the rates changing. So that's the general idea of interest rate hedging. And the way that you can do that is by using some hedging products. So in the syllabus in AFM, we have got a variety of ways that we can protect against them, all of which do get tested. Now the first of these are forward rate agreements. So these are forward contracts and they just allow you to lock into a rate in advance. So it might be that I say, right, I know that I need a loan in six months time, that's gonna last for four months, and therefore I can just say, right, I want to take out this product, and these are bespoke, so I could do this for any amount, this could be, I don't know, $123,000 or something a bit odd, and we can go and set that up with the bank, and then we know that we're gonna end up paying that amount of interest, we might lock into, let's say, 5% interest, we're gonna pay 5% interest on that loan, no matter what happens. So that's the basics of an FRA. You're gonna lock into a rate in advance and then you know that's how much you're gonna pay no matter what. Now quite similar to that are futures. So futures allow you to fix into a rate in advance as well. The difference with futures are these are traded. People buy and sell futures. And as a result, the contracts are standardized. So whereas with forwards and FRAs you have to take out whatever amount you want. You can just use that for any amount. It's bespoke, it's tailored for you, and they can be for a variety of lengths. Futures have standard contract sizes and standard lengths as well, and they're usually three months for interest rate futures. So these are then traded, which makes it a little bit more complicated and a bit trickier to arrange and to set up. But fundamentally, again, you are protecting by locking into an interest rate so that you know when you come to take out this loan or make this deposit, you know what interest rate you're gonna get. Probably the most flexible of these is options. So another hedging product is options. Now these allow you to agree a rate and then if you want to use that rate, you can, but you don't have to use it. So you get a choice with options, which is lovely. So you can either exercise the option, which means use that rate if it's better for you, or if the rate on the day, let's say interest rates have actually moved in your favor, you can abandon that option. You can just say, no thanks, or sometimes people call that let it lapse. I don't wanna use that anymore, and I'm just going to take advantage of the better rate. So options are a little bit like an insurance policy. You can use them if you want, but you don't have to, which is really nice. Now there is a downside with options in that you have to pay a premium upfront, which is non-refundable. So that is a real catch. So you've got to bear that in mind when we're deciding whether to use those. And then a couple of other products that are in the AFM syllabus that you should be aware of, collars. So interest rate collars are based on options. And what you do with collars is you set a maximum amount of interest that you can pay. So what we call a cap. And then you also set a minimum amount of interest you're gonna pay called a floor. And the collar is like the range in between those. So that's a range in between the two things that you know 
where your interest is going to be. And the reason you do that is you end up with a slightly cheaper premium than if you were just to use an option. So you sort of restrict your potential gains with collars, but as a result, you end up paying a bit less of a premium. So that's those in a in a nutshell because there's a quite a lot to those. And then there's also interest rate swaps, which allow you to swap between a fixed rate and a variable rate. So they allow you to switch that and actually can allow you to get a cheaper deal as well. So they're interest rate swaps. So with all of those, with anything to do with interest rates, really, really important tip here, you need to time apportion them because unless these are lasting for a whole year, which is very, very unlikely, I don't know if you've ever seen that in AFM, you're going to need to time apportion it. So if this is a four-month loan, we're going to need to times these things by four over 12 when working out the interest. So remember with interest rates, you need to time apportion them and consider the length of the contracts. So for your futures and for traded options, you need to think about the length of contracts. Now, I mentioned there about traded options. There is something called over-the-counter options as well, which are bespoke and OTC, they're called, um, and they can be for any amount. So they're a little bit more like forwards. So that's a quick overview of the interest rate hedging products. Next up, let's think about how foreign exchange works in AFM. So when hedging foreign exchange in AFM, you may be paying some foreign currency or you might be receiving foreign currency. Now with foreign currency, you don't need to time apportion it. I just said about time apportioning interest rates. That's because these loans or deposits last for a set amount of time. When you're doing a foreign exchange transaction, that's just a one-off deal, isn't it? Like you just exchange the money, job done. So it's not lasting for a set amount of time or anything. So there's no need to time apportion it, which is good. But the complication with foreign exchange is that you have to think about which way round the exchange rates are given. So is it in euros per dollar? Is it dollars per euro? So you've just got to be very careful which method they are using so that you when you're translating it, you are going in the right direction. So some of the products that we see for foreign exchange are actually really similar to interest rates. And I think a lot of students make the mistake of almost seeing these as completely different things and learning it all again. But it's pretty much the same stuff, just with a couple of changes. So when I do my pro formas for my students, when we're doing uh, AFM hedging questions, I give them the same pro forma, but just with a couple of little tweaks. So they're not learning the whole thing again. They're not going through completely different steps for how to do the hedging calculations. They're just going, oh, actually, this is pretty much the same as interest rates, just with a couple of minor tweaks, which is what you want. So you get forwards for foreign exchange, which allow you to fix the rate in advance. Again, there for any amount and any date, which is brilliant, really flexible. You've got futures, which are, are traded and therefore standardized, as we talked about. You also get options. So all of those three, um, very similar to your interest rates. There are a couple of different products specifically for foreign exchange in the syllabus. You've got money market hedging. So that's where you're going to borrow some money in one currency and then deposit in the other. And by doing that, it's a clever little move and you can use some boxes to work around it. I've got a YouTube video on that if you want to see how that's done. So put money market hedging Andrew Mower into YouTube and you'll be able to see that. So I'll show you all the different steps of that one. And then you've got something called foreign exchange swaps as well, uh, which can allow a currency to be exchanged and therefore two companies to protect against foreign exchange movement. So you've got some, yeah, some different products there for foreign exchange. But again, the core, like your forwards, futures and options, very, very similar for both of those as well. Okay, so there's a quick overview of some of the hedging products available and what hedging is and what they do. What's my advice for you if you think, oh, hedging is really hard, I don't know what to do? Honestly, it is just practice. And the more questions you do, the more you'll realize, actually, this is pretty similar. Oh, I remember doing this in a previous question. You know, I'll look at a hedging question and think, oh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what to do here because I've done questions like this. Yeah. 200 times before I know exactly what I need to do so that is the key practice as many as you can and if there are any little weird bits or anything don't worry too much about it just make sure you get the basics get your structure right everything else and that's going to be absolutely fine now a couple of resources for you on my YouTube channel so remember it's at Andrew Moa AFM on YouTube I have done a full interest rate swap video explaining how interest rate swaps work. I mentioned that money market hedge video. I've done that as well. There's a futures video. So futures made easy to see how futures work with some numerical examples. And then I did a question where I walked through from start to finish a hedging question against the clock. 
So make sure you check that one out as well and see um, how I work through that four question. So remember, hedging is okay. Honestly, I'm not just saying that, it is fine. Practice it, keep working at it, and you will learn to love it as much as me. Thanks for listening.